If you've got a new welder on your list, well, look no further. No, I'm just kidding. There are thousands of welders out there. So really this video is just to kind of give you an idea of maybe some of the features that you'll want or things that you'll want to look for in a welder throughout all the different price ranges. Just so you know what I'm referring to in the videos, I will be calling this the MiG-200, the 250, the ARC Captain, the Titanium, and the Lincoln. And the prices are 250, 350, 450, 550, and you guessed it, right? No, of course not. Uh, it's 1200 bucks. And it just so happened that these three kind of are more of the European style. I say that because uh, this little connection for your MiG gun, that is a Euro style MiG connection, I guess you could call it. Um, I'm partial either way. I don't mind that connection. Now this is a big factor for lots because you may not have it. Some machines are 220 only. Some are just 110 volt only. And well, the Arc Captain right in the middle, it's actually got an adapter. It can take both 110 or 220 power. Pick up the Titanium up at Harbor Freight and then the Lincoln at Home Depot and some welding supply shops. Both just 110 volt only. Even though the MIG guns do look similar, they are not the same. Um, you know, both of them go up into the machine and connect, but the type of pin connections and the actual fittings on the end are slightly different between brands. There is a definite weight difference between the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones. These guys down here are only about 18 pounds. Both of these are about 20, 25, and then you got the Lincoln that's about 35 pounds. And just looking at the outside, you can actually see that they do use heavier duty components versus the cheaper ones. Might be one of the reasons why they're comfortable giving a three year warranty. Speaking of warranty, um, you do get a 12 month with the MiG 200, 12 month with MiG 250, 30 days with the Art Captain, 90 titanium and good old three year with the Lincoln. If you're getting a multi-process welder, you probably want to do every process. And just to let you know, not every welder comes with all of the accessories. In fact, out of these five, only two of them come with all four accessories for each process. And that would be the titanium and who would have guessed it? The cheapest one out of the bunch, the MiG 200 for 250 bucks. And the interesting thing is, I actually think they have very similar kits put together. As you can see, the stingers are identical, and the TIG torches that came with it, identical as well. The black MiG-250 only comes with the MiG gun. The Art Captain comes with the MiG gun and stinger. Titanium comes with everything, and then your Lincoln comes with just the TIG MiG torch, not TIG torch, and your stinger as well. These three MIG guns are pretty much identical. Um, granted, they are all the Euro style, so guaranteed they're off the same floor. One thing that sets Art Captain apart is, holy cow, check out this Stinger. I mean, I wonder if they're comp- Anyway, uh, the only thing that's kind of different is the Lincoln. Um, yep, whether I'm assuming they have patents on their, uh, on their stingers and stuff. Very nice stinger, well built. And they, of course, the signature, you know, MIG gun that comes out at almost a 90 degrees. Lots of people love that. Point of this is to actually read and make sure you know what you're getting. Um, if, you know, you end up wanting to get one of the cheaper ones, doesn't have a TIG torch, well, I'll put some links in the description to get you by. If you haven't got a little modification, um, check out my Lincoln welder video on how I modify the TIG torch to get that guy going as well, without having to spend, you know, like the 300 bucks on theirs. Just because all of these are multi-process machines does not mean that they can weld multiple types of material. So, uh, of course, they can do steel. That's, you know, probably the 99% of what people do. The next material is, I would say, aluminum. And so keep this in mind. I'm not going to get into the whole science things, but you need an AC output machine to TIG weld aluminum. All of these are DC, so they can't do TIG welding aluminum. These three, you can actually hook up a spool gun and MIG weld aluminum with them. So in short, these three, yes, with extra accessories. I can keep the arc captain on because, well, the fan actually doesn't kick on until you start welding. All of the displays are, you know, different with the different setups to the knobs and the actual displays themselves. Some of them, like these two down here, the display actually is for voltage and amperage, not wire speed on those MIG settings. The MIG 200s kind of has a couple extra knobs versus the MIG 250 has more buttons to go through your selection. 
The R Captain actually has quite a range of displays and settings. You actually can do a little programming in here as well. So, um, might be a little hidden gem this one that I've found. Drawback that I haven't been able to find is to switch this over to inches per minute. Um, probably can't see that, but the display or the readout is meters per minute. Titanium is, is straight up uh, amps for stick and TIG mold and then a wire feed speed um, or it's a wire speed. It's in inches per minute and voltage. And take a look over here at the Lincoln. You've got one button to choose your process and um, two knobs. And that's it. I guess being Lincoln, you can do that. To go along with that, it is so nice to have a good set of suggested settings throughout all the different processes and thicknesses of materials. Now the Art Captain actually does have some suggested settings. They're just in the manual, not up on the panel. I'm sure I'm going to get asked, well, what about the duty cycles, okay? Here's my thing. I've done some pretty large projects here in my garage, and I've never run into a duty cycle issue. That is where I've ran the machine so much that it actually has to stop and wait or to cool down. And that's just because these machines are plenty good enough for your home or even small shop type use. You know, obviously, if you're in a big fabrication shop and running nonstop, yeah, you're going to be using those, you know, three phase Miller, really high 480 volt type machines. Here, you know what? If you're just starting out, you're not going to have to worry about duty cycles. With almost all the MIG welders I've seen, they come with DINs connections, especially kind of multi-process welders. And it really just makes the change out between the processes really quickly. You'll see two different sizes, either a larger 35 to 50 or a smaller 25. In case you care, the R Captain and the Lincoln actually come with the largers. The others are the smaller 25. What welder to get? Well, here's some things to think about before you make that purchase. What are you actually gonna be welding? Do you need all of the processes or could you really just skip all the multi-process welders and pick up a flux or MIG welder? What type of projects are you actually going to be doing? Is this just going to be a one-off thing? And so really, you know, if it works for that one project, great, my trailer's done, I don't need it. Or do you want that three-year warranty? So obviously, if you're solely going off of price and you want the cheapest thing out there just to get your foot in the door, well, you're going to be picking one of the cheaper machines. If you want something that has more features and some more stuff to it, well, maybe the Art Captain Titanium. And if you got a bunch of money to spend and want something that will be there for your grandkids, look into the Lincoln. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.